Few people have the visibility earned through years of contributions to the scientific knowledge of the thoroughbred as Dr. Sue Stover. Dr. Stover has been uh, working over a number of years. Some of the, many of the projects that you hear about, including the initial work leading towards the toe grab decisions uh, originated with Dr. Stover and her colleagues. We're very proud to have her involved. She is a professor at the University of California at Davis, uh, med uh, veterinary science school, veterinary medicine school, and I'm proud to say that she has worked on a number of projects uh, for the Grace and Jockey Club Research Foundation. Dr. Sue Stover. All right, thank you for the very kind introduction, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and listen to everyone else's uh, tremendous progress over the past couple of years and, and good work. So thank you for the opportunity to share some of our uh, work as well. Um, hopefully I'll cover three objectives, um, just to review some of the rationale that uh, links race surfaces and their importance with the likelihood for injury share the results of a uh, scientific study we did comparing dirt, turf, and synthetic surfaces, and uh, present some of California's initial experience with synthetic surfaces um, uh, through the courtesy of uh, Rick Arthur. I think we need to remember that these injuries in elite athletes, which our racehorses are, are, rep are related to repetitive loading events. And these events, uh, just like other structures, uh, uh, culminate in injury through the process of fatigue, where if we had a stick, we could break it with a very heavy load applied all at once, or we could wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, eventually accumulate damage within it and break it. And it's important to note that when we do that, that we can break it in a much smaller load than if we had applied it all at once. We recognize that this process occurs in injuries in our equine athletes. Uh, just giving an example of the uh, humerus, uh, the bone between the shoulder and the elbow. This is a typical fracture from a racehorse in which we have a, um, a soft spiral. It occurs over and over again. And if we look at the top of that spiral, we can see evidence of fatigue, damage that was occurring over time. And that's evidenced by this new bone production on the surface. So we know this injury was developing, although it ended up in a catastrophic fracture in one acute event. If we look at the trabecular bone on the inside of the outer cortical shell, we can see the process of fatigue in this scanning electron micrograph. This is like the trunk of a tree on the right, a branch coming off of it. We can imagine that if we jumped up and down on the branch, that it would buckle on the bottom. It would split on the top. And here we see evidence of repair and bridging. Why is this important? It's important because we recognize that fatigue, uh, failure from fatigue, is related to the number of cycles of loading, which are the strides that our horse takes each time they exercise, and the load magnitude of the force. And injury is more likely with higher loads. The limb is a system of levers. And just like we use a lever, such as the, a jack handle, when we're attempting to jack our car up, a lever is an instrument in which you can decrease or increase loading depending on the length of that lever. If we translate that to the limb, the um, pastern region and the hoof, for example, are a lever about which loads are transferred up the limb so that those structures which sustain those loads, in this example, in the fetlock region, the suspensory ligament, the sesamoid bones, and the distal ligaments are on the back side of that fetlock and have to sustain those loads. So that if we can imagine that the force transferred from the race surface to the hoof ends up in supporting the body weight through loads through the tendons. And if we increase those loads through the race surface, then the tendons have to sustain greater loads, have greater risk for injury. And as we've seen nicely illustrated already, the fetlock joint itself hyperextends and enhances the risk for bone injury. So this is why the interaction with the race surface is very important, or it results in injuries such as this, fracture of both proximal sesamoid bones. Sure.
sure, so, sorry. So the race surface has great potential to uh, modify risk for injury, and there are several factors related to the race surface that can affect that. However, if you look at the results of numerous epidemiologic studies looking at the effect of race surface on injury, the results have been very inconsistent. And this is because epidemiology studies are looking at natural data, and there are many other factors that are changing simultaneously. We call those confounding factors. But that just uh, indicates that we need to have other approaches for studying the effect of race surface on injuries. There are numerous approaches that need to be followed in the future. The one that we like that we had an opportunity to perform were direct surfaces, direct measurements on horses on the race surface. We measured for forces and accelerations between the synthetic training track, the dirt main track, and the dirt turf track at Keeneland Racecourse. Uh, we did this by building and applying a shoe, a horseshoe that measures the forces between the race surface and the horse's foot, putting this on a race horse, race horses, and uh, measuring them during trot and slow gallop for safety reasons. This data illustrates a comparison of the vertical ground component of the ground reaction force between the horse's hoof and the race surface for dirt on the top, synthetic surface in the middle, and turf on the bottom. These are typical curves in which the scale on the left is the same for all curves, and the height of the curve reflects the magnitude of the ground reaction force. And we can see from these typical curves that the, that the synthetic surface tends to have lower heights than the other surfaces. And in fact, if we look at that graphically, for different components of um, the vertical ground reaction force, the synthetic surface was indeed much lower than the dirt and the turf surfaces. We also measured acceleration of the hoof by placing uh, an instrument on the hoof itself during the same study. And when we look at the accelerations, again, for dirt surface on the top, synthetic in the middle, and turf on the bottom, these are typical recordings, again, with the scale on the left the same. And similarly, we found that for different components of hoof acceleration, that this particular synthetic surface had lower values for uh, than dirt and the turf surfaces. And this graphically illustrates the same thing for one component of, of acceleration, which was uh, comparable to others for heel strike when the hoof first comes down and meets the surface. Synthetic lower than dirt and lower than turf. So in summary, surface material had a large effect on the hoof loads and the accelerations. Vertical forces on the hoof were smallest for the synthetic surface than for the other two surfaces measured. Hoof accelerations were also smallest for the synthetic surface. And although I didn't illustrate it, uh, hoof vibrations, the amount that the uh, hoof is going into acceleration and deceleration components was greatest for the dirt surface than for um, uh, turf or synthetic surface. So our conclusion from this is that synthetic surface materials have great potential for injury reduction. However, it's important to recognize that um, both synthetic and natural surfaces vary greatly from one surface to another. So extension of the results of this study should be done with caution uh, to other synthetic dirt and turf surfaces. We recognize that there are other ways that the force through the tendons can, uh, and hyperextension of the fetlock joint in, resulting in joint and bone injuries uh, can can be affected by limb biomechanics. And this includes things such as lengthening the hoof lever, uh, one factor that may be related to um, risk of injuries associated with toe grabs and other appliances. So I think it's important that we extend these studies. Uh, we would like to pursue studies of how the hoof interacts with the surface. Um, these are uh, videos, again, dirt on the top, synthetic in the middle, turf on the bottom and simply qualitatively looking at the first complexity of the interaction of the hoof with the surface and the difference with um, how the hoof interacts with the different surfaces. 
These are just uh, pilot uh, studies, but you can see here with the turf how the hoof moves considerably both forward, backward, and forward again. So we would like to extend these studies in the future. I'd also like to share a few uh, pieces of data about California experience with synthetic surfaces, and this is actually data of Dr. Rick Arthurs, and uh, I hope I'm not taking this out of context. I tried to summarize this, um, uh, summarize what he presented at an earlier date. Uh, the California Horse Racing Board is, as we know, mandated that major racetracks install synthetic surface. And this uh, is a, a comparison of injury data one year before that change and one year after that change. In 2006, comprised pro predominantly of dirt and turf, turf surfaces, there were 317 fatalities. In 2007, predominantly synthetic surfaces for the race surface, a uh, slight reduction in injuries that's probably not, uh, wouldn't be statistically significant, 301 injuries. Looking specifically at the Del Mar uh, meet, there were fewer injuries on the synthetic surface. Um, although it appears to be a, um, a significant reduction, there is a lot of variability from year to year. However, I think that it's noteworthy. Um, when injuries were, when uh, Dr. Arthur categorized injuries by activity track and surface, um, omitting those injuries that were due to sudden deaths and accidents, um, looking at racing injuries, fatalities per 1,000 starts, looking at over, this data is from over 77,000 starts for the dirt surface and over 13,000 starts for the synthetic surfaces, the injury rate markedly reduced uh, in the year uh, pre-synthetic surfaces and compared to post-synthetic surfaces. Um, however, looking at training fatalities compared to fatalities per 1,000 works and uh, during training, uh, it appears that the um, incidence of injuries is not very different. This is also associated, however, with a large amount of variability over time in which there was initially uh, low rates on the synthetic surfaces and subsequently higher rates. I think at this point in time it's premature to um, tell whether that's related to uh, specifically to the surface or other, other points in time. But similarly, it was interesting to hear Dr. Scalay's findings in that um, uh, at least uh, initially appearing to have marked reduction in injury rates and uh, whether or not, not that will hold will be the test of time. So racing fatalities appear to have decreased in this initial data and I emphasize the initial part and um, training uh, fatalities have been more variable relative to expressed as a rate relative to works. And thank, just like to thank uh, you again for the opportunity to be here, to listen to other people, and to share our results, and to those organizations that have contributed funding to allow us to uh, investigate these problems <coughs> on behalf of the welfare of the horse and the industry, and um, we're in the programs uh, providing this data. Thank you.